The Bingham Canyon Mine is the world's largest and deepest open pit mine. Considered to have produced the most amount of copper in history at more than 19 million tons of copper, if we turn that 19 million tons into dollars today at a price of $9 per ton, it would roughly equate to $177 million. Now, $177 million may seem like a lot, but that pales in comparison to cryptocurrency mines. For example, the entire Bitcoin network has the ability to mine the equivalent value of that entire lifetime of the Bingham Canyon mine in just over 8 hours. That's right. The combined force of all Bitcoin miners in the world can mine over $176 million worth of Bitcoin in just 8 hours. And if you think that's crazy, well, stay tuned for more. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Wealth Professor, the community for informed people looking to build long-lasting wealth. Make sure to subscribe for our weekly videos where we cover the future of business and finance. Today we're going to talk about the massive cryptocurrency mines in Iceland. One of the biggest mining operations in the world is owned by a company called Genesis, and the large swaths of computers that do the mining is what they call Enigma, that was most likely named after the Enigma machine which Germany used in World War II to encrypt messages. We're also going to talk a little bit about Bitcoin and what makes it so profitable and attractive to miners like the ones in Iceland. Just as a refresher, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a digital currency, with the more appropriate term being cryptocurrency, short for cryptographic currency, that was made by a mysterious man called Satoshi Nakamoto. Now what makes Bitcoin so appealing versus regular currency is that it is 1. Decentralized, so there is no central governing body or authority that oversees Bitcoin. A single group or entity doesn't have the power to break Bitcoin or circumvent its security. It needs the consensus of everyone, or at least a majority of the entire Bitcoin network, which is, mind you, composed of millions of individual computers and server farms working in unison. Number 2. Bitcoin promotes anonymity. Anyone can make a Bitcoin wallet and send and receive transactions without the need to present any government-issued IDs or personal information. As opposed to conventional banks or other e-wallets, a lot of individuals are seeing Bitcoin as a big win for privacy. One can essentially remain anonymous while making any form of transaction, whether big or small. The third important thing about Bitcoin is that it is secure. Many researchers actually claim that its security is basically impenetrable, or as near at impenetrable as we can get. The only way to forge information or misrepresent transactions in the Bitcoin network is if you control the majority or 51% of all the computers in the Bitcoin network. To give you some perspective, the largest Bitcoin mining pool, Ant Pool, only makes up about 25% of the entire network. The next two mining pools combined only account for 12% of the network. So these three crypto mines combined are still a far cry from the 50% that's required to make a sizable difference in the network. The fourth important thing about Bitcoin is that it's finite. There is only a limited amount of Bitcoins that can and ever will exist in circulation, and that number is capped at exactly 21 million. So why is there only a limited amount of Bitcoin? Well, to create scarcity, and to make it retain its value. Unlike the fiat or paper currency we have today, where the banks can just make the money printer go burr indefinitely, with Bitcoin there's an actual upper limit as to the number of mineable coins. Given a scenario of Bitcoin versus your traditional paper money, with conventional banks, if for some reason they decide to throw logic out the window and decide to print money without thinking twice, the currency we have now will basically be worthless. That's just how supply and demand works. If the government or monetary authorities decide to print out, say, 10 trillion US dollars tomorrow and decide to distribute that evenly among every single US citizen, you can bet that the US dollar will become worthless overnight. That's how scarcity works. Going back to Iceland. The question is, what's so important about Iceland anyway? Iceland is a Nordic country located on the northern part of the globe, just beside Greenland near the Arctic. So that explains why temperatures are generally lower. 
Summers in Iceland actually have an average temperature of just 12 degrees Celsius. It's also a country that's abundant with natural resources. One of them that's important to this topic is their abundance of geothermal energy. So what does being a cold place and an abundance of energy have to do with the topic of this video? Well, everything. In Iceland, energy is abundant. And more importantly, because of this abundance, energy is relatively cheap. The hardware used for Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency mining, whether that be a GPU or an ASIC or application-specific integrated circuit, consumes hundreds of watts an hour. But in a single farm, there may be thousands of these mining rigs running at once 24-7. Cheap energy is important as it's one of the biggest operating costs you need to take into account if you want to keep costs low. Another thing with using up that much power and having thousands of computers mining is the heat that they produce. Iceland's cold temperatures act as a natural heat sink that lets mining farms cool their servers with less dependence on ventilation and cooling systems. This of course also helps significantly lower the costs of mining. With all of these savings, it makes Iceland pretty much a prime candidate for setting up multiple server farms and mining operations. Let's go back to Genesis Mining one of Iceland's largest mining operations. Now, they don't make it all that easy to know the numbers of how much they make and how large their operation is, or what's the combined computing power of the entirety of Enigma, but they do publicize the technologies that they use in order to attract investors and potential users of their services. Some time ago, they actually let journalists film Enigma and their mining operations. So how does Genesis make money? Well, they started off as mainly an Ethereum mining operation, and do still specialize in Ethereum today. But after growing to the scale in which they are in now, they believe that they could actually make more from leasing their mining rigs than mining for cryptocurrencies themselves. So basically, they changed up their business model and they pivoted to leasing out their huge ASIC mining operations for companies and for the public to use. Right now, Genesis Mining markets themselves as the world's leading hash power provider. If you go to their website today, you can see that they have several pricing options as to the amount of mega hashes per second that you can lease out from them. They're very flexible with their pricing and configuration options, and as you can see from their website, their price ranges from anywhere from $500 to tens of thousands of dollars for leasing out their hardware. The issue, however, is that recently a lot of people have been claiming that Genesis Mining is maybe a scam or that you'd have little to no chance of making money given the competitiveness of mining nowadays. Even leasing out a large mining center would still yield you pretty little profits. This is actually to an extent true. Leasing out mining servers is no longer the cash grab it once was. But what made it unprofitable anyway? With the most popular cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin mining's difficulty rising more than tenfold in the past three years alone, Right now, it seems as if Genesis mining are in trouble. Now, of course, Bitcoin price can still go up and make mining profitable again. But it's a chicken and egg situation. The more the miners, the more the difficulty goes up, and therefore, mining profits go down. And so here's our conclusion. While mining itself is still heavily profitable, and mining in Iceland is still not a bad idea, using cloud mining services may no longer be the future of crypto mining. The resounding theme when it comes to crypto mining is that the best way to do it is to either get your own equipment, which you can then sell later when you're done mining, or to continue to use the equipment yourself beyond the purposes of mining. So if you learned something new from this video, click on the like button below, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe to The Wealth Professor for more content like this in the future. And so we'll see you guys in the next video.